Eric Ten Hag has come out and reacted to Manchester United 2 and Aston Villa 2 in there for you. Welcome to United Matters channel. I go by the names of Rock and David. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to our channel so as not to miss out on stories that you do upload in here on a daily. Obviously, every after the game is done, the manager really speaks to the media and he speaks to different media houses. He has spoken to Sky, BBC and... Uh, the media down in Australia in a game that we had lots of things to learn, especially when we are really on pressure. You get when we are really known to the ball, how we react, how the mindset of these players is really how it drops off in there for you. Because in the second half, as I told you in my match reaction, that we played a high line. Something that was uncalled for. We couldn't play high line against Aston Villa. And I really believe that it might it might have been, it might have been, I thought, by the way, before everything, I was thinking that maybe it was the thinking of the manager or the plan of the manager. But the manager came out and told us, that, told us in the, in the post-match program that, please, for us, we don't drop off. We don't drop off. We have to play that proactive, high-intensity game for the entire 90 minutes. That, the, that's what the manager wants in there for you. And I really believe that one of the things that really led this game not to go as unplanned was that Eric Ten Hag never wanted to make any substitutions either for you and he wanted this team to play close to 60 or 70 minutes. But was that running in his mind? Because in the game of Crystal Palace, after the first half, he brought on Danny Van Bink for Scott McTominay. So, is it an indicator to him that he's lacking depth? Obviously, the answer is yes. As I told you that this game of football, if we had a proper CDM, we would have bossed, we would have bossed a side which goes when Aston Villa a lot. Because when Teres and Ghana came in through in the second half and they played some 20 minutes in the for you, you saw what happened. You saw what happened. They, they at least made it hard for Aston Villa to peruse through our midfield. But before they came in through, Aston Villa, every time they wanted to come, they came and really dominated that midfield area. Obviously, today's game shows you that the saying that the games of football are won and lost in the midfield has been replicated out in the field of play, has been showcased. Because in the midfield, who won in the first half? Who won the midfield battle? Manchester United. And they are two goals up. In the second half, who won the midfield battle? Aston Villa. And they equalized. The game ended 2-2. So, they are all over us. Meaning that whoever wins the midfield battle, obviously, takes the game away in that half. Or in that small period of time when he's winning that midfield battle. So, this 10 you sends a lot of message to Manchester United fans all over the world. Don't be excited about Anthony. I think the most, the most excitement, exciting story for it's the exciting signing we should go in for is for CDM. That's why Ten Hag really came out and really told the media that he was really pleading for Nemanja Matic to stay and give him at least one more year at Union because he knows that he needs stability into that central midfield. He needs a player who is a certified CDM. And I don't know why now the market, we've not yet gone out for one. We need to go all out for one if at all we are to save our season. And I told people that we can't be any special. We can't be any special. And I'm hearing people outside there, YouTubers saying that Ten Hag does not play with the CDM. That's out. Let no one lie to you. He has always played with the CDM. And when he was with Dijong, he was playing a double midfield pivot. You get? There was a CDM sitting there. Dijong and Danny Van Bink was playing ahead of them. So, we should get in a CDM as soon as possible. If I don't really want to get in and grind results from what we call the Premier League that is starting on the seventh for side of United in the for you as we host Brighton at Old Trafford in the for because what you saw in the game of United versus Aston Villa in Perth could be mirrored and translated at Old Trafford on the seventh. We can go ahead and really have some good sixty minutes and then we drop off because we are lacking quality from the bench. Obviously, we lacked quality, especially in the midfield. Guys, tell me, who is a certified midfielder you would have re really brought onto the field of play to come in and really give you control and change this game of football? No one. You never had anyone. But the beauty is that there is Ericsson, but Ericsson can just really get you that passing bit of it, but defensively and the defensive cover can really give you that? No way. So, I think the positive is that Lisandro Martinez and, Lisandro Martinez and um, Ericsson, but again, it's not enough. Will everything have for starters play Lisandro Martinez in the central defensive midfield? Because he's so much good on the ball and can really take us forward a lot. I don't know what he's going to do because 
we need the CDM, guys. We need the CDM immediately in there for you. Now, without further ado, let me take you to what the manager really said about this game of football as United drew with Aston Villa in there for you. He said in the pitch conditions, it's the circumstances you have to deal with. This football field is equal, so you have to make an advantage from it. Yeah, thank you, Ten Hag. Thank you, Ten Hag. I came out in the match question and told people that let a pitch not be not be a point for these players to lean on to really go ahead and really say the pitch was not bad the pitch was bad was not good trust me i remember in the season of 2020 we played the fa in the fa cup we are playing Tran is it Tran 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 we beat that team by six goals to one but the pitch was very bad it was like a big stay i'm sorry to say if i know there are muslims watching in but it was like a big stay that was dirty enough for you. So that's what the game of football is all about. You have to orchestrate everything on the field of play. At least you might not be so accurate in the passes that you play, but that, that does not guarantee you to go ahead and really lose the possession. So that shouldn't be that shouldn't be given as an excuse by Manchester United players. Because in the first half we had the control on that same pitch. Second half, we lost control of that pitch and we went ahead to play a high line. No, no, sorry, we had to play a deep line instead of a high line. Something that we believe that I never saw any hungry telling them that please let's 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 go ahead and really and really go back to the high line. Maybe it was the plan that let us see what their game plan was because every manager would like to know if at all I go in half time by two goals to nil in the lead. I need not to go on and really start off on the front foot. I need to first sit back and see what's the plan of the opponent. Maybe. When we got to the plan of the opponent, it was too late by the time we got to know it and we couldn't really adjust to really stopping them from really getting us what we, what we wanted to stop them to play. But that shows you that we lack squad depth. We need players in that midfield to change everything. Ericsson is here. Martinez is here. A CDM is needed, guys. A CDM is needed. However much we need other players like Anthony, a center forward, a right back, but my priority is a CDM. So I really believe that Eric Ten Hag really came out and really told us the best thing I really expected him to say about this game of football. Then he said, we want to play proactive football. We want to play with initiative. We want to play with initiative. We want to play attacking football. I think that's what, we, that's what, that's what we, we've seen today over long periods. But in the end, you have to control the game. And that is what we didn't do. Obviously, Obviously, in the first half, we had control of the game. But in the second half, Bruno was nowhere to be seen. Freddy was really putting out passes and blind passes, left, right, and center. You get? Uh, Danny Van Bink was also nowhere to be seen in the second half. In the first half, we are really so much visible, and they made themselves available to get that ball. But in the, <laughs> in the second half, these players were nowhere to be seen. They are invisible. They couldn't really put up passes together. You get? And to me, the person that this affected the most was Anton Martial. They couldn't get him on the ball. That's why he dropped so much into the midfield. Even when the ball, even, even in that first goal that he did score, you saw to hit that, it's Martial that makes that run deep to get that ball from Diego Dero. Then he plays into, into Bruno. Bruno plays Rashford. Rashford releases Luxor that Harid made a very good overlapping run and he really crossed that ball and found Sancho bang into the back of the net. So it shows you that they were so much bad. They couldn't really connect the attack. <coughs> they couldn't connect them in field to the attack. So something that we need to go ahead and really work upon either for you. Because even if you win, you must win with control. Ten Hag is not this user coach like Oteta. Not a Teta, Oliguna Sosha. I'm sorry about that. Oliguna Sosha, who just went ahead to say that, oh, we won the game of first power. We won it. And this is United. This is the United way. We are winning. That is not Ten Hag. Ten Hag wants to win with high possession, passing accuracy at like 87% or 90. He wants to win with lots of shots on goal. He wants to win while creating chances. He wants to win while controlling the game with the lion's share of the possession in there for you. So that is Ten Hag, and that's what he wants. If at all you can't offer that, he won't come out to be happy for any win that United is getting for you. But every game, he tells you that we have lots of things to go on and do. And he tells you that I've seen lots of mistakes either for you. And I think on his way back to Perth, he's talking to Richard Arnold. And um, 
and John Mott have telling them, please get me signings. I need signings. I need players to boost up the squad in the foyer because these players, some of them have been lame for like three years. They've not been improved. I need players of quality to come into this team. And I know you guys, you're going to see the game of Atletico Madrid, Atletico Bilbao. I know Lisandro Martinez will play part. Uh, which other player? Ericsson will play part. When they come in, you'll see a difference. That technically gifted players with a field of play, you can get the hold up play very, very well in there for you. So let's wait and see how things are really going to unfold in there for you as United goes ahead to play a side which goes by name Aston Villa as they return to Manchester today. Now, Ten Hag said United players can have a lot of confidence because they are good, but they have to know, they have to work hard and play as a team. Then we will have good performances. He's insisting so much on to us playing as a team because when you look at Rashford, he went for those Hollywood shots that had no aim. You get? Martial had made a very good run and instead of really playing him in, he went for a shot. He went for like three shots into the entire 70 minutes played that we are uncalled for. And instead of releasing other players, he was he went selfish. So that is what the manager is talking about, that we need to come in this game of football and be so much, so much, so much team players, not really selfish players. And that's what's going to make us a very good team because working hard, even if you work hard, when you're not really playing as a team, you can't get that both the points and the goals that you deserve that really lead you to winning either for you. Then he said, we had control of the game and then we gave it away. That's not good. Obviously, that's good. He's right. He has hit the nail onto its tip. We had the possession and we gave it away to a side which goes by the names of to a side which goes by the names of Aston Villa because the first half we controlled the game very well. Second half we gave a possession to them. And secondly, that is that almost brings out the game, all mirrors out the game we played at Aston at Villa Park. 70 minutes we were leading by two goals to nil <coughs> sorry about that 70 minutes we were really leading by two goals to nil and in the next 10 minutes we concede the first goal and the dying minutes they equalized us so it shows you that we need to go ahead and really keep the control of the game to ourselves and really see to it that we don't give our opponents any any chance i'm good to say that the manager is really coming out and accredit and it's really and really calling it out that we really lost possession yet we had it then ten hag said for the players for the team i think we make a lot of progress a lot of positive aspects i would say i'll also at the end a setback but it's also part of the season you also have to have setbacks and have to deal with it all right yeah, I really like this game of Aston Villa because it's going to really send a message to the board that plays. Why don't you get in the manager the players once? Obviously, Ten Hag is to blame because the board would have really delivered very many signings before. But he told them that before we bring in any signing, let's first get the Jong in because I really believe that he's my Maki signing. He's that player I really believe that he's going to be the heartbeat of my team. And the United took time. And when they really agreed a fee with Barcelona, that's when we hijacked Malaysia and we brought in Christian Eriksson. So, lots of things are really happening at United and we expect lots of good things to happen. But, obviously, the manager is saying, you can't be good every game. That's it. You can't be good every game. So, setbacks really coming through, but you have to go ahead and really deal with them. Because I cannot stand here and promise you that in the 38 minutes, in the 38 game season, we are going to win all of those games. No. There are times you are going to lose. There are times you are going to draw. There are times we are going to win. But what I can promise you that I really feel is that wins will be more than losses and draws. That's what I really believe. So the manager is really looking at this. And I know he's really going to get his video analyst onto this game. And we tell his players that please, you need to go ahead and really look through this game. And you see how you really played in there for you. He said, I think... The support was incredible too. It was really fantastic experience with so many fans all over the world. They support us and it will help us in the season to know they are behind us. Obviously, obviously the field was um, close to 60,000 people full and they really liked the way United really put up in the first half. But second half was really so much, so much disheartening and not an eye, 
not it couldn't catch the eye of any to watch but all in all you know the game of football it's all about ups and downs but it has really given Ten Hag a very good picture that we need to add in more players and a CDM is needed obviously everything that we never did in the second half it was because of the midfield that dropped off and we couldn't we couldn't press at the front line because Martial was left alone in the wilderness you get and the midfield had also dropped back so I really believe that that shouldn't be a very good plan the plan should be press press and press and the high line should be really so much promount in the for you or paramount in the for you then Ten Hag said so many fans we have to give them back and we will work hard for that so he wants his team to really go ahead and really do the needful in the season obviously the season is starting just two weeks from now in the for you then Eric Ten Hag asked if it's harsh to blame David De Gea for Aston Villa's last minute equalizer he said I have to see it back but there was a push on De Gea as he was aiming to go ahead and really and really meet that ball or punch it there is a player is it Maguin Maguin of Aston Villa who really came and really pushed him a little bit and he couldn't really raise up in the foyer because these things are really normal you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't see them because or the referee couldn't really call out for a free kick or a foul because we never had the AR but in the season it's going to be something different even in the first half the beginning of the first half Aston Villa claimed for penalty because Freddy looks like had fouled. Is it Watkins in the box? So if I told the VAR, they would have gone ahead to look through it and see whether they award the penalty or not in there for you. Then Ten Hag said to Sky Sports that I think in general our forward players did really well. That's what he said, and we really connected. They were difficult to defend as we had a lot of movement skills and can finish in the for you. Obviously, they are difficult to really defend our front three reason being when you get them on the ball they are really a threat but trust me Aston Villa came in with a good plan and Steven Gerrard said all right I just have to go ahead and suffocate the midfield that really supplies these forwards or that links play to the forwards and that's what happened in the second half and you couldn't really play in there for you against the side which you got Aston Villa but all in all it's a good lesson learned but the manager is still hailing his front three but he still needs more that's why he's wanting a player who goes by the names of Anthony in there for you and doesn't want Ronaldo to leave then he went ahead to tell Sky Sports that I I think like all the players in the first half Dan Van Bink had a very good performance. I think they had really asked him about Dan Van, Dan Van Bink, but obviously in the first half, most of the players really had a very good performance in there for you, but the second half really, I think none of the players really had a very good performance in there for you. That's it. I say it with all the authority and authenticity on to how we played this game of football against a side which goes by the names of Aston Villa. Then, <laughs> Paul Hurst has told us that he's a report of Time Sports covering Manchester United. That means he's a correspondent for United. And the club has told him that United are due to arrive back in Manchester on Sunday lunchtime. Eric Ten Hag has given players Monday off. Obviously, Monday, the players are off and not playing. And they're really going to go ahead and really relax as they prepare for Tuesday to go ahead and really train at Carrington in the For You under Eric Ten Hag. So that's what the manager had to say in this game of football as he's ups and downs either for you but it's been a very good game for him to learn lots of things from it because trust me trust me there is a lot to learn and there is a lot to celebrate in this preseason obviously the style of players improved we know that we're having a manager who is a hands-on coach and the players are really improving and they're really playing very well i'm so much good i'm so much happy for bruno because i, I really believe that he is really a bruno who is more improved though in the second half he went back to the bruno of last season who could just do aimless passes and he couldn't really give us control the main reason of a player like bruno is to link the midfield to the attack line and he didn't do it very well in the second half that's why you saw aston villa suffocating us left right and center and i think that also gave us a reminder that we need to add in more signings at united we need the cdm guys we need the central defensive midfielder to come and sit in the foyer however Martin de Jong comes we need a central defensive midfielder because you're not going to play him in every game but there are games like this when he's the only solution that you've got obviously the solution that you got we had in this midfield the only solution we had to put this game at play all in the right order was for united to go in and really bring in a cdm that's it because he would have really outcompeted the likes of douglas Luiz, the cameras because a cdm is so much good at controlling the ball and having it. that's why you saw 
Freddy losing possession close to three times in a space of like 10 minutes. You get? Because he's not a CDM, he's not used to playing into that area. But when you're having a CDM, he gives you control of the game immediately in the face. So your reactions are welcome into the comment section below. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to go into the lower right bottom corner and smash the subscription button. After smashing it, hit the notification bell that will enable you to get notified each and every time I upload a video onto this channel, which goes by the names of United Matters Channel. You go by the names of Rock and David. I want to see you guys flock into the comment section. Tell him what you think about Eric Ten Hag reaction to United 2, Aston Villa 0 down in Perth. Our last game in there for you. But the preseason continues on Saturday. Next Saturday, we are playing a team which goes by the name of Atletico Madrid. And on Sunday, we'll be playing Roy Valucano. Obviously, a team that is going to play, is a team that is going to take part into the Saturday game, will take part into the Sunday game. Obviously, it's a plan for Ten Hag. He really knows that. This is the test of how these players can press for 90 minutes. He really believes that he can see them play for a full 90 minutes. Therefore, he's going to be a fully split squad. I think for we have like, th how many players do we have? I think we're having like 30 players. Obviously, we are going to be having 15 players up. Only three substitutions will be available, I think, for every side in there that's going to play into this game of football in their face. So, guys, tell me what you think about Ten Hag's reaction. And I sign out for now. See you later. More other videos are coming up later. Until the day with, with transfer news and a very exciting story about Anthony to Manchester United in there for you. So I'm out. Rock and David is my name. United Matters Channel is the YouTube channel. You are watching me and I'm out.